What's good, family? What's good? It's your boy, Urban Sports Guru. Want to hit y'all up for my week 11 picks. Yes, we are already in week 11. That's the good thing about football season. Football season takes you from September to January. Before you know it, we are already at week 11 for crying out loud. But let's get right to it. We're going to start off with Philadelphia going on the road to play Cleveland. I like Cleveland. And let me tell y'all why I like Cleveland. Cleveland has an identity. Cleveland, both teams run the football very well. Cleveland has a better offensive line. But Cleveland's identity is in running the football, meaning they're going to run the football and they're going to keep running the football. Why? Because they don't want their quarterback making mistakes. Philly, last week against my Giants, they lost, as I told y'all, ran the football pretty well. And then, for whatever reason, stop running the football. Yes, they had a lot of penalties, but they stopped running the football. And when they stopped running the football, then the quarterback starts making mistakes. Starts missing throws. He didn't turn the ball over last week. But that's because he had to deal with a guy like Miles Garrett coming around the edge. Giants don't have a Miles Garrett, even though they sacked him like four or five times and hit him 13 times. They don't have a Miles Garrett. Guess what? Cleveland does. And they had a hard time stopping the giant run game. Now you got to deal with Cleveland's run game. Cleveland stays dedicated to the run game. I like Cleveland. Next, we have one of the most controversial games of the week. And why? I'm going to get to that in a second. <clears throat> AFC South Divisional Rivalry and Falcons versus the Saints. And what makes this so controversial, Drew Brees is hurt, cracked ribs, Cracked ribs, etc. But Sean Payton is going to start Taysom Hill instead of Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston, what the fuck are you doing in practice? What the fuck are you doing in seven on seven drills? For them to t- for this for, for coach to start Taysom Hill over you, you threw for five thousand yards last year, and he's starting Taysom Hill over you. What the fuck are you doing? This pisses me off. Because I was, was, keyword was, I preface that, was a big fucking supporter of Jameis Winston. I really was. <clears throat> I really was. And those of y'all that watch this, y'all have heard me say in all season that I think he should have went to Pittsburgh. Why? Because I didn't think Ben Roethlisberger would make it through the season. And he's already made it until week 11. God bless him. The same him make it through the season. But... <clears throat> But um, Drew Brees gets hurt. He gets looks like he's gonna get an opportunity, but he doesn't. They start in Taysom Hill. For the life of me, I don't know. I'm taking the Falcons for this reason. In the history of this rivalry, this NFC South rivalry, there's a lot of shootouts. Both of these teams are dome teams. Both of these teams can line up the scoreboard. Atlanta defense is far worse than New Orleans. But both of these teams light up the scoreboard. So Atlanta's going to score points. I don't know if Taysom Hill can keep up and keep pace. I mean, New Orleans will have to put up a Herculean effort defensively to keep things from not being what they normally be in this, in this rivalry between these two teams. And because of that, I'm going to take Atlanta in this game. Unless Sean Payton, he's been singing the praises of Taysom Hill for the longest, saying that he could really be a quarterback. Nobody believed him. I didn't believe him. Taysom Hill, this is your chance to shine. Let's see. You got to show me. I'm taking Atlanta. Now we have Cincinnati going to Washington. Alex Smith gets his start at home. And Alex Smith is one of the best stories of the season. One of the best stories of the season you know, him breaking his leg, the injuries that he had. And he started last week, I'm not mistaken, and he's going to start this week and starting at home. I think it's such a feel-good story. I'm happy for the brother. God bless him. And I think he's going to come away with a win. I think, this, I think the Washington football team and Alex Smith as their quarterback is going to get a win. Now, next game, we got the Lions at Panthers. Teddy Bridgewater is a game-time decision. Um... For that, I like the Lions. Matthew Stafford. Actually, it's kind of one of my locks for the week. 
Lions over the Panthers because of that. Lions giving two and a half. That's one of my locks. Steelers over the Jaguars giving ten and a half. I have every confidence the Steelers are going to win. Only question is, is this going to be a quote-unquote trap game where they'll cover the ten and a half? That's not the question. Whether they'll win, of course they're going to win. Of course they're going to win. They're playing the Jaguars. Of course they're going to win. Um, next game, we have a playoff rematch. You got the Titans against the Ravens. Now, the Titans are not known for their defense. Why? Because they're not good. But it looks like the book on the Ravens is starting to be put out there. And the fact that they've had, Mike Vrabel and company have had 10 days of preparation, I think is what's going to keep this game close. But because their defense isn't really great, even though I do like their offense very much, but their offense is going to have a much tougher sled this time around. Mm -hmm. If Lamar Jackson can just keep away from the turnovers, just keep away from the turnovers and run the football, Ravens are going to win this game. They'll get their little, it's not the playoffs, but it's not, so it's not exactly the same, but they get their little revenge off. Now, my other lock for this week is the Patriots over the Texans in Houston. That's my other lock. I expect the Patriots to start putting foot to ass, to getting things moving. And I like New England. I think Deshaun Watson is going to keep it interesting. But the Patriots, are, they're, well, they're rounding themselves into being a real good football team, collectively. I like the Patriots. We got the Dolphins. At Broncos, pay attention, people. Dolphins have won five games in a row. And of those five games, they've beaten the Cardinals, beaten the 49ers, they've beaten the Rams. Don't shoot the messenger. Guess what? They're going to win six games in a row. That's my other lock for the week. Call. Dolphins over the Broncos at mile high. Jets coming off a bye week at Chargers. I think the Jets are going to win one game. Doesn't matter. Adam Gase should be out of here. But if there's any team that will lose to the Jets, it will be the Chargers. Because the Chargers is snake bit. They find ways to lose. Chargers are giving nine and a half. Chargers going to win. The only question... I don't know. I just don't trust them. They find ways to lose, and I think it's so bad because they've spent so much money on the defense, put so much resources into the defense, and the defense is blowing leads left and right. It's just a sad thing to watch because Justin Herbert is balling. Balling. Chargers are going to win. Will they cover? I don't know. Big fucking question mark. Now, the Packers at the Colts is probably going to be one of the best games to watch. Colts are better defensively, much better defensively. Um, I'm going to take the Packers because I think both teams are solid in the offensive line. Packers have only given up 11 sacks all year. Colts have only given up 9 sacks all year. But I'm going to take the Packers because it's going to come down to quarterback play. And I can trust Aaron Rodgers more than I can trust Phillip Rivers. Two weeks ago, the Colts should have beaten the Ravens. Because there was plays to be made that Phillip Rivers is fucked up. He wasn't sharp with the football. Last week against Tennessee, he was sharp with the football. They won. They're a better team. Both sides of the ball, they're just better. But going against another sharp quarterback, <clears throat> different story. I like the Packers. In a good game, a nice close game. Cowboys at the Vikings. Now, last year, the Vikings went into Dallas against a better Dallas team, unleashed Dalvin Cook, and beat the shit out the Cowboys. Now the Vikings are home. Yeah, Cowboys coming up to buy. They're going to unleash Dalvin Cook. And guess what? They're going to beat the shit out of the Cowboys. I like the Vikings. <laughs> against a far worse than Dallas team. I like the Vikings. Now, the 8 o'clock game. Chiefs at the Ravens. Chiefs are given eight. First thing I gotta tell you is very this certain things are supposed to aren't a short thing. So many things. There's certain things are supposed to are a short thing. Like Andy Reid coming off a of bye. Sure thing. Secondly, 
the fact that the Chiefs have been coasting this year because they know they're that damn good. And the one time where they felt came into a game and felt like they was going to be challenged, i.e. the Baltimore game, what did they do? They put foot to ass. They didn't win. They beat them in the way to send a message home. You ain't fucking with us. That's what I think is going to happen. Especially after them winning the first game because they took them lightly, getting into a shootout with them. I think John Gruden and company is going to keep it close early because they're going to pound the run. Jacobs and a good or great offensive line, even with having guys out due to COVID. But I think the Chiefs are going to put foot to ass. I think them, especially after they're doing a victory lap around the stadium. Oh, they're going to go to Las Vegas. They're going to put foot to ass. You heard it here first. By your boy Guru. Chiefs. Now, here's going to be a real measuring stick game. Monday night. Rams at the Bucks. Real measuring stick game. You know, the Rams are 6-3. and three. Pretty sound in all areas. Offense, defense, special teams. Then you got the Bucks, who on paper are just so stacked. On both sides of the ball. I like the Bucks for this reasoning. I like their defense. I like the Bucks defense against the Rams more so than I like the Rams defense that is damn good against Tom Brady and company. Here's why I say this. I think having Jalen Ramsey, you could put him on Mike Evans. You can do that, but they have so many other weapons. I don't know if they could cover tight ends well. You got Gronk. That's a bad recipe. Now, coming up with a blocking scheme to deal with uh, Bane in football cleats, a.k.a. Aaron Donald, figure that shit out. Do the best you can, then just pray for the best. But when I look at the Bucks defense, the Bucks defensively, they haven't played well the last couple of weeks. But look at the Bucks defense, especially since Andrew Whitworth, the left tackle, is out. I don't think they're going to be able to get pressure on Jared Goff. And Jared Goff with pressure, I don't like him at all. Jared Goff without a running game, I don't like him at all. I don't. And for that reason, I'm taking the Bucks. Hit me in the like. Hit the subscribe. It's your boy, Armin Sports Guru. And I'm out. Salute.